Hey YouTube, Ryan here with the House of Hearst. I wanted to talk to you today about an interesting discovery that I made while uh, taking a, uh, a training course recently. Tannerman's Training Company, uh, for which I manage the gun shop here in Martinsburg, hosted uh, George Hill of Crusader Weaponry, based out of Utah, uh, for a two-day defensive pistol and tactical shotgun training course uh, a couple weeks ago. On the first day of the course, which was the defensive pistol, I had uh, some interesting experiences when doing tactical reloads with my firearm, um, which is a SIG 239. It is empty, nothing in the magazine, nothing in the chamber. For the first half of the course, which was about the first four or three or four hours, um, when I would go to do a reload with my handgun, I would come up, hit the magazine release, and withdraw the magazine from the magwell, as opposed to drawing a new magazine and just letting the one that was empty fall free, and then loading a new one. It was a very hard habit to break. Uh, by the end of the day, I was doing it just fine. Um, but I couldn't really put my finger on why it was I was doing that, coming up, always retaining the magazine, pulling it out, putting it in a pocket or storing it in, you know, a dump pouch. Um, it was something that I was thinking about, but like I said, couldn't put my finger on why it might be happening. Anyway, uh, later on that week, I uh, also picked up a new to me, but uh, used Ruger Mark II government target model. Also empty, nothing in the chamber, nothing in the magazine. Now, I've been doing a whole lot of practicing with this recently, mostly because it was fun. Um, I've got a couple other Ruger Mark IIs. This just happened to be the one that I was playing with when I made my uh, revelation. Um, the Mark IIs have a heel release. Push down on the, the heel release and withdraw the magazine. That's exactly what I was doing with my 239. It didn't occur to me, uh, like I said, until I was shooting hitting that he released it, withdrawing it, that that muscle memory that I had begun culturing by playing with my Mark II's a lot was carrying over into my training uh, with my defensive handguns. The, uh, I mentioned it to George, uh, and he said that it's a very good example of training scars. You know, it's, I've got a, a, a whole lot more 22 long rifle that I can practice with than I do 9mm which makes it a whole lot easier for me to just go out on my back deck and start shooting some 22 rounds at targets as opposed to practicing with my carry gun, the 239. Now something that I thought about later on as far as a way for me to train and break this habit is to have a 22 conversion kit. Now unfortunately there is not one available for the 239. I do however have a SIG 229. Nothing in the chamber, nothing in the magwell. Gun is empty. This is my nightstand gun. Uh, I purchased this firearm before I purchased my 239 uh, as a carry gun. Found uh, it, it to work very nicely for that purpose, but when I picked up a 239, it ended up being just a whole lot nicer carry option for me. Uh, I have this set up with a Silent Chico 9mm Osprey and a Streamlight TLR1S. It also comes with factory night sights. Makes a very nice double stack uh, home defense pistol uh, in setup if you're going to use a pistol for home defense. Now something that I thought about when I purchased this gun was that I would like to be able to train with this gun and shoot less expensively. So what I bought was one of these. SIG's 22 caliber conversion kit for 229. I've had that thing sitting in its box for probably a couple years since I purchased this pistol. Um, I mean, it's extremely easy to swap these out. There you go, that took me, what, five seconds to swap out my 9mm upper for a 22 caliber upper? I should have been training with this more than just having fun with my Rugers. The Rugers are extremely good for, for target practice. Uh, for even small game hunting, but if I want to practice my defensive skills, it should be with one of these, a 22 caliber conversion kit. 
Now, some of you may have uh, 22 pistols that are available that are very good replicas of your carry gun. Uh, for instance, the SIG makes the 1911-22, as well as a couple other uh, manufacturers, GSG, Colt, etc. Um, as well as Smith & Wesson's M&P-22, which is a pretty much identical copy of their M&P uh, series of full-size defensive cut, uh, handguns. If you have the ability to practice with one of those, it's, in my personal opinion, an extremely good investment to pick up one of those to have in your little pistol arsenal uh, to, to practice with less expensively, but to still have the exact same controls and function as your personal carry firearm. Um, training scars are, can be a hard thing to break. Like I said, I, in a full day of training, it took me half the day to break that one scar. Um, if you're developing other bad habits, maybe changing up what you play with, you know, every once in a while, uh, as far as your handguns goes, will show you something that may or may not be developing in your own personal uh, training regime. For me, it was taking a defensive pistol class after having been playing with my 22 a lot that helped me realize personally what I was developing. If you can pick up a 22 caliber conversion kit, do it. It's going to help. Uh, that's really just something that I wanted to, to put out there. I haven't seen a whole lot uh, talking about training scars. So I thought that I would share a personal experience. Um, if it's something that you enjoy, you know, share it with a friend. And uh, I hope you took something away from this. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you uh, like this video, hit the little like button down there and uh, subscribe to my channel for, for more videos coming up. Thanks for watching.